Hello everyone and welcome to Day Trader S&P 500. It's a rare Saturday night edition. This is Dale Woodson, editor of Woodson Wave Report and Day Trader S&P 500. I want to take this opportunity to get all of our YouTube subscribers caught up with our newsletter subscribers who receive reports every trading day, sometimes more than one per day. I want to get into, uh, we're going to take a little different approach. Let's start with the NASDAQ futures. Okay, here we are here. Let me make this bigger and let's see if we can get this more into view here if I can. Okay, there's the all-time high back in November just like the NASDAQ cash. Okay, we have five waves down here for a wave A. We have an A up, a B down, and a C up. There's the all-important August 16th high. It's a wave B high in other indexes, but we have divergence which is typical in a bear market. In 2000, the S&P and uh, the NASDAQ topped in March of 2020. I'm sorry, 20, 2000, while the Dow topped in January. So we're getting the same bear market divergence, but I wanted to show you guys this. And for what it's worth, I want to let you guys know that we have more subscriptions. We do have a, a NASDAQ e-mini futures subscription, which is um, $89 a month, and I upped that update that once a week as you can see there okay but uh and also we have others we have a video on demand which has um bitcoin tesla and others that we update once a month that's only 55 dollars a month but the most popular is the monthly which goes out virtually every day okay but i wanted to show this nasdaq here the futures okay so we have an abc up it went above the August 16th high, which is wave B in the other indexes. There you see our target there that went out uh, to our customers. But I want to show you the divergence here. That's the NASDAQ E-mini futures. That's a daily chart. Let's get to the NASDAQ itself. And here you see, I can make this bigger here. Okay, here you see the NASDAQ itself. And there's that, um, let me pull that down a little bit. There we go, move that up. I think I'll squeeze that all in there make it bigger okay and here you can see that uh there's that a up that b 816 high you can see the the cash nasdaq composite has not yet broken above the b wave high on august 16th it could it still could so we'll watch that real close okay and you'll see the uh i think we can see the dow here don't usually show it but we will Okay, the Dow is a completely different wave count uh, because it displayed an expanded flat in wave two, but its counter trend bounce higher, it's still below there. Okay, so you can see we've got a, a one and then a two expanded flat. Okay, so, but the Dow, it's equivalent to the August high is this a December high, or was that January 20? Yeah, let me look at that. Yeah, January high, okay? So that is below. So there is the divergence there. I want to take you guys to, let's get you guys over to our report here, okay? Because we got a lot of catching up to do. It's been over a week, which is unusual. Let's go to the, uh, the May 15th report. And here you can see we identified a wave four triangle. I want to make this point here too. Back on... Uh, I think that was May 1st, we saw three waves down, okay? And then, so that told us this is corrective and it's going up and this is a, this is a wave three up here, this is a wave four, and then we have a fourth wave triangle, okay? That was the alternate count at that time, but it ended up being the primary count. We knew we were getting five waves up because we got three waves down, which was, I'll get into that maybe right now. Okay, let's get into the ES and um there is the daily okay and that again there's the b wave high hasn't gone above it yet it still may if it does there's our targets uh for the alternate count in blue a move above that august high of 43.27.50 in futures will trigger a move to the 44.66.50 in the alternate count that has been here for months and months we're just seeing if it'll play out but let me get back to the the May 1st. Okay, here's the hourly chart, and uh, we have the ABC three waves down. Okay, a move below here is our downside trigger. We've been putting downside 
triggers in red, obviously, and upside triggers in green on our uh, reports, okay, to our newsletter subscribers. You can see a one, two, three up, and here's that fourth wave triangle that we identified, and we had a trigger here, and it was activated. The key was identifying three waves down here. It's like, okay, we're getting five waves up because uh, we had three waves down. Doesn't matter if you think it's a bull market, a bear market, it's 10 years old, it's 10 minutes old, it's five waves one way and three waves the other. So here comes the five waves, there was the four, and the market does thrust out of triangles per Elliott Wave, uh, to, to Elliott's book, <laughs> okay, Elliott's Masterworks, which I loved reading. We had another trigger here, again, I'm trying to catch you guys up. So we were looking for five waves up and here we go and we got a one two three four possibly a five right there again the key resistance is that b wave high on august 16th of 43.27.50 in the futures and it was 43.25 in the cash market so let me catch you guys up with all of that uh, with our reports i think we showed that um 5 15 and do we have the five 16 here we go there's that triangle again okay downside trigger there upside trigger there the 4206 um, was the next target and that was the resistance level there that was on 516 try to get you guys caught up with the other things here and we have the 518 morning report here okay thrust higher out of the wave four triangle wave five targets okay there was our trigger, it was activate, activated, our downside trigger did not come into play. We needed to see a move down there for lower lows. Didn't happen as expected, and we had a one, two, three up right there. There's the wave four, there's the trigger, bang, it hit it, and here we go, and there's our targets there. It even exceeded those targets, but uh, that is in futures, future reports. Okay. That was the May 18 report. I might as well jump right into Friday's May 19 report, which is there. This was an interim. I think this was on the cash market, okay? This went out to the annual subs. There's that 43.25. The, the cash and the futures and S&P are the same wave count. The numbers are just a little bit different. Again, you can see the alternate count in blue. A move below that B wave low eliminates the alternate count and there's our targets there the alternate count there there's that uh, critical uh, support or resistance level i'm sorry in the cash market that was the um s p cash and that was may 19th did i put in the other report here and that was a pre-market open that's the same thing with uh, different numbers that is the s p futures or es and you can see the wave count there so uh some people have asked is this um, a new bull market here and, and is it a, a wave one up and a two and a one you know basically one up two down one up two down one up you know third of third wave to the upside and the the easiest way to to answer that is this does not look like a third of third wave if this was a third of third wave it'd be virtually vertical like uh look at this third wave here from this two to this three that's the kind of move you need to see this is the third wave down if this was a third wave up this looks tired it looks like it wants to roll over it looks like a correction okay uh it it may turn out i may turn out to be wrong we'll, we'll see but I, I still think it's a, a second wave or a b wave after uh, five waves down and you see our different counts there the primary in black and the alternate in blue okay so that was the um, may 19 market open report so let me get back to the charts here so this is the most operative here where we identified the three waves down they're kind of small a in red down b in red up c in red down one now we're looking for five waves up we got the five ways up. We got the thrust out of the triangle. This is a, um, some of you guys may not know, I started doing Elliott Waves in 1996. And uh, I was doing an hourly wall chart on my basement wall. And uh, for, for months, I, I didn't see five waves up. I didn't see five waves down. I'm like, this Elliott Wave, it doesn't work. I don't, I don't see a pattern. And what it ended up being was a triangle, long sideways triangle. That's fourth waves, okay? 
So that's what I first learned. So um, it's rather easy to, for me to spot triangles because that's the first wave, Elliott wave pattern that I learned when I st first started studying and analyzing Elliott waves on an on a hourly wall chart in my basement. Uh, then computers came along and it's much easier, okay? So this may be five, it may go higher, but again, that key resistance is the 4327. And if it does hit, is this okay here? Yeah, then that 4327.50 is there, then it'll kick in the alternate count in blue. So we're at a pretty interesting interesting stage. Will we? Will the divergence continue? As, as I noted, the, uh, the futures moved above that August high, the NASDAQ futures. Again, we have a subscription for that, a weekly subscription, and, but the NASDAQ cash has not, okay? So we'll see if the futures lead the way for the cash market like they always do. We'll see if the NASDAQ leads the way and the Dow and the S&P follow, or will divergence like in the bear market of 2000 uh, happen and they make different highs. In this case, it's a counter trend bounce higher in a second or a B wave. Okay, try to up you, I'll try to update you guys a little more often. As you know, I usually do. I've been very busy, but wanted to take this opportunity to catch all of our YouTube subscribers up to uh, what our newsletter subscribers have, um, have already had for uh, quite some time now. Okay, until next time, take care, everyone.